folks, welcome back to Do You Remember This Movie? Or this TV show. Or this TV show. Or, or this TV show, of course, yes. Hey, Trent. Hey, Cam. How you guys doing tonight? Great. Better than okay. Better than okay. That's awesome. Well, hey, uh, like always, tonight we're going to discuss two movies. Um, we're going to go over a couple, a couple different ones. Uh, and I want to just say that this particular episode is about movies featuring Kenny Rogers' beard. And Kenny Rogers himself. So, with that being said, <laughs> Cam, please uh, take it away. All right. Well, uh, you you know that uh, I like to write my own synopsis, but um, th- this this one on IMDb just really <laughs> captures the essence uh, in in literally one sentence. So, a lifelong yellow belly who made a deathbed <laughs> promise to his father to be a pacifist seeks bloody revenge on the men who gang raped his wife. Just, I don't know how you can do better than that. And you know, the problem with this movie is that, okay, like, okay, we'll, we'll say at least one the last time. The word gang rape is not funny. I mean, it's not. It's hor- horrific. It's terrible, right? But it, it, what's, I, I guess I like to seek out weird movies. And I think this movie is weird in the aspect of that it was a TV, like, family friendly movie. Um, but it features a, a gang rape and it's, and I, I know I keep saying that word and making it sound like it's funny. It's, it's funny because it's ludicrous that you would, that you would have, you would put s- such a serious and devastating thing inside such a uh, kind of a, a friendly package. Right. And then, but what's even weirder yet is it's based on a hit song that was a crossover radio hit that also brings up the, 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 the assault. I mean, it, it's, it's, um, it's bizarre. And, and I, you know, I should have clipped it. I, I feel now I, I instant regret that I didn't clip this, but, um, you, did you guys know that there was a, a Alvin and the chipmunks version of this song? <laughs> no, that's crazy. Really? And of coward in the County. Yeah. And here, here, here's what we'll do. We'll what we'll do for our, our viewers here. We're just going to take a brief pause. And um and I'll just insert the um the audio. So here we go, Elvin the Shipmunks, Tower of the County. All right. And so I uh, they they obviously skirt over the um the 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 assault in that, but um it, it's 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 weird. It's it's weird. And um. And my my last thing I'm gonna complain about with the song is the song. If you guys have ever heard the song, um, it it's a uh, it's far more dramatic than the movie is, right? And so sure. th- that's kind of where in lies our our issue with this uh, with this movie. Um, Corey, who's who's in this? Like, who's the main who who would be the main focus of this of this picture? And what, uh, well, the and focus- what would we know him from? Well, the the main character, the coward, is the main character in this movie, uh, Tommy, who uh, Frederick Lane, I believe his last name is, if I'm saying that right. But um, if you don't remember him from this movie being the coward, you probably mainly remember him from being the security guard in The Dark Knight Rises. Gotcha. You've seen that, right? Gotcha. Yeah. No, he was a security guard. Everybody remembers him from that. In the in the stock exchange scene. Uh, yes, it was the stock exchange. Yeah. Yep. He, that's a yeah, vital no. part of that movie. <laughs> um, cause when I think of the, the main, I mean, I think of, uh, security guard. No, um, I, yeah, this, this movie is kind of full of, uh, uh, people that we don't really know. Um, but it also has, uh, it has the, the, the Kenny Rogers himself, Ken, mm-hmm. Kenneth, Kenneth Rogers. All right. Um, uh, I got some clips for us. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's play along with some clips here. Um, I'm trying to remember what I even did, uh, with these clips. But I, here we go. I want you to smite me on the right cheek. Yeah. Okay. So we actually start this movie off with um, a church scene, which, um, I guess, again, th- this movie couldn't be more wholesome, right? Um, <laughs> I, this is before Lifetime was even a, 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 a flicker of a, of a thought. Uh, the Lifetime Network. This is this is like old school. I would believe ABC, maybe NBC. Uh, you know, Sunday night movie, but um, this is where I, I Kenny Rogers is the the a pastor, like the preacher, 
He calls himself mm-hmm. a preacher. And actually, he uses the word preach in as an adjective, verb, and a noun in several sentences throughout this movie. Mm-hmm. All, all, t- at the same, all at the same time. Because as a preacher's preaching, is preachy as preach. Uh, so, if I'm going to be a preacher, I need to preach better. Yeah. I sh- if I'm going to preach, I need to do what I preach. Yeah. I gotta we gotta to expect preach. America's greatest songwriter to be, you know, good at verbiage. <laughs> I'm gonna preach it because I'm a preacher. I'm gonna have the preachiest preach on, on tonight's preach, you know. All right, so um, this is where he's asking this guy to smite him because mm-hmm. he's trying to. So this is the foreshadowing of the movie. The lesson he's trying to teach the 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 congregation. I almost said audience. Uh, the congregation <laughs> is that you you know. When when somebody gets angry with you, turn the other cheek, right? Because that's verbatim the lyric of the song, and uh, you know it is to turn the other cheek, right? Um, so and he actually came up with that too. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's it's promise me, son, not to do the things I've done. Walk away from trouble if you can. It won't mean you're weak if you turn the other cheek. Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers. And no one else. <laughs> Preach it. <laughs> okay. Um, so here we go. I, I, yeah, it, the, 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 uh, the quote would be, you know, preacher Joe <laughs> as played by Kenneth Rogers. Right. Um, okay. So here's the scene. It just doesn't make sense. He says, punch, you smite me. Um, smite me, brother Hofelter. There was a time when you gladly smoked me with a beer bottle, as I remember. <laughs> Long time ago, Matthew. It was. We were young. That's true. And children of the devil. But we stand here in the name of the Lord, and I want you to smite me. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. You mean it, Matthew? In the name of the Lord, smite me, Claude. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good. That was a good smite. He looks smitten. Also, uh, he's going to mention it here real quick, and I, 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 clip, I, I kept the clip going just for um, this, that, that he tells him to smite him on the right cheek. Um, but Kenny Rogers, even though he's a, 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 a lyrical genius, he wasn't enough of a, like a streetwise genius to realize that a right-handed person would not punch you on the right cheek. Um, that's just... Like a back fist. Yeah. Matthew... I love how he thinks he's about to hit him. Yeah. In front of all these witnesses. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. So he turned in the same cheek. I've been to church many, many times in my life. You got the power of the Lord in your arm, Claude. (laughs) Kind of expected on the right cheek, though, Claude. If you don't mind, I think we'll ask Brother Toombs to... Benediction. All right, sorry to cut you off there, Corey. What did he say? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't quite hear what he said there. Well, then he, he just said like, I thought you were going to hit me on the right cheek. Well, oh no, he was never going to hit you on the right cheek. He always had his his right hand. Like that just doesn't work. It's going to come into your left. Yeah, yeah, and his um, left cheek. What he had it planned. That was his turning cheek. He's like, <laughs> I can't turn my right cheek. Come on, man. Haven't you ever heard the song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, I was just gonna say that uh, you know, every uh, every church congregation uh, I've ever been to, um, we usually end things like that. Um, you know, we hit the the preacher. A yeah. Times. Well, I'm I'm Catholic, so there was always, I'm just there was always uh, you know physical violence. <laughs> I mean, usually, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's how the, that's how the movie starts. So, um, again, it, it starts off with this flawed ideal. Um, so, uh, again, back to the song. I, the, the song is, is essentially that the, the, the father of Tommy um, was a, you know, probably some kind of ruthless man. I mean, he was, he was a uh, troublesome guy. And his his um his anger issues and his and his resorting to physical violence is what landed him in jail and ultimately his death. And he makes he makes his son make a promise that he's never going to be the same guy, right? right. And, you know, and so, it, like I said, the 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 song is far, and I don't like the song, but uh, but the song the 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 message is far more powerful than this uh, this weird movie. And I, I'm I'm not going to try to um to uh, uh, attack Corey here. You like what you like, but I 
I when I got that text from you that you said you like this movie, I was so <laughs> I was so shocked because I actually picked this movie for how rotten it is. Well, I mean, I would like to say that like it's it was definitely the type of movie that I started watching it and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, what did I what did I what am I doing? You know, at first. And honestly, like I where, knew where did, about, where did this right turn happen in my life? <laughs> I knew that there was gonna be, you know, the big scene, you know. But like I did I kept I kept watching and waiting, like when is when is like the, the big plot point happening? Well, I mean fast forward, yeah, you know. Then it's over. <laughs> so um but overall, like it it did remind me of a Hallmark movie, but kind of a more gruesome Hallmark movie. But I mean, like overall, I mean it was okay. I mean, I'll tell you what my rating is after after yeah. we're done here, but well, I'll, I'll hold that off. So, and you kind of touched on it here. Like this, this movie is like pretty like super sanitary throughout uh, until the one scene and then the brawl. Sure. Um, so I think I have um, kind of the makings here. So yeah, this scene, um, it's a bunch of people who don't know how to play musical chairs, <laughs> which I felt worse for the whole town at this moment than anything else. Like when they when they send the the young boys to war, I, I wasn't as deeply affected as knowing that this town <laughs> has lived this long without knowing how to play musical, musical chairs. chairs. Um, but what a good old time. And this was the the holiday carnival, right? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. So we're playing doubles. Gosh, when's the last time you guys played musical chairs, huh? In hours or days? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you do that when you get home. <laughs> so, so as you see here, they're playing with doubles. I've never heard of this. This is this can't be legal. That's just waiting for a chair to break. In the in the lower forty eight states, this can't be legal, yeah. <laughs> right? People were lighter than though. And also, you know, if that's the cake you win, you're not wearing a hairnet, lady. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> is this oh. is? Oh, go ahead. I'll just I'll show the scene. I want to see what happens. Oh, first I was gonna mention this guy. Uh, this, I got that haircut. Yeah, this guy, I don't know the actor's name, but um, this is one of the Gatling brothers, right? Um, he's not the main bad brother, but he's one of them. And um, he was also in another movie, and I think that was his, I'm not joking, I think this is his only other thing. He was the complete idiot in um, a movie called, uh, I think, it, is it called Hot Dog, the movie? <laughs> So it's about hot dog. Yeah, it's about skiing, and um, he's the the. Uh, I, I I'm gonna have to look this up now because I now put I, that on the list. I um, I I feel um a movie called Hot Dog that's about skiing. Didn't uh, wasn't that a Seth Rogen movie? I uh, well now I feel bad that I brought it up and I um. What was that one called again? A sausage party. Sausage party. I, I I unfortunately saw that in theaters. <laughs> one of the biggest regrets. I own that movie. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> I don't know why. We can all be honest. <laughs> like, safe space. Okay, okay. So, so now that we've now that we've waited for this, I I, I use our trusty IMDb. By, by the way, if IMDb is ever watching one of our programs, you should just put us on the payroll. We talk about you guys a lot. But um, oh, I well, ooh, that's Pikachu. Detective Pikachu, <laughs> uh, starring Seth Rogen. Here we go. <laughs> I we got Hot Dog the movie. It's a skiing movie starring Shannon Tweed, um, and uh, and this guy is um, a terrible, terrible character. But I'm going to show him here. He's the guy with the um, with the uh, uh, sunscreen on his nose. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, throughout the movie, uh, that movie's just awful. That, that's even worse than this one, really. But I uh, he he's a uh, his character uses all these terrible pickup lines on girls, like really forward pickup lines. And um and at the end of the movie it works. That's 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 his journey in that movie. All right. Oh my god. I'm, trying, I'm looking at it as well. It's on, you know, it's it's out there. It's ranked five out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it that long ago. Um it wasn't that long ago. I and it was a, I, I don't remember what streaming service it was on, but it, it just played. It might have been when we were when I was watching the 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 cutting edge movies, and it just it was like, oh, if you like skating. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're gonna love this one. Check this winter movie out. So you're saying this dude is in that movie? Yeah, he's a he's a he's a not the main character, but he's a main character. And that's and that's what that's that's the end of his uh his world. Um, okay, I, you know I'll give it up. The other brother, the I I don't I don't know if it's this guy. I can't really see his face, but um, the other brother, um. Is I uh, is also in uh, he's in an amazing movie, but he really only has one other credit. Have you guys ever seen the mermaid movie Splash? Yeah, I never um, saw it. I know of it, but I don't think I've ever actually seen it. No. Yeah, it's 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 a I mean that was a phenomenon at the time. Well, what but it's so you the the it was one of those movies that had to have a sequel. I mean, it really did. It just, that movie felt incomplete. I mean, what is just a mermaid? No, we need to know more about this person's. So he was in the movie splash two. And not numeral two, like T O O. Um, and, uh, it was, it was, it was, uh, absolutely terrible. <laughs> anyway, so, um, they didn't get Tom Hanks. No, he's the Tom Hanks character. Actually, I think he plays Tom Hanks character. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's enough about the Gatlin brothers. I don't think the main Gatlin brother um, was in anything else at all. Oh yeah, I'm right. That's that's him. That's uh, Splash Two. You saw it here first, folks. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's one of the most dirty moves you'll ever see in a in a, in a movie. This is just sabotage um, times a hundred. I've never seen such callous act. The music stops. He turns the chair around. They win. But that's like the classic move. Which I've never been able to pull off. Doesn't matter, Violet. Take whatever it takes to win. It's pretty easy to make a cake. Okay. Let's be I guess fair. they don't know that. We'll share the prize. <laughs> hey, Tommy. <laughs> And now they're married. Well, and I'll tell you, and then this is what, I mean, this, this is what this, this poor guy has to, to put up with. I mean, the violence is unreal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the, the synopsis, the bloody violence. Um, so I'm going to, we're going to skip past this. I do want I did want to show this cause I, I, I felt like, uh, any viewer that would watch our show would probably want to just want to know about the movie and never watch it themselves is, um, so here is, I think her name is Becky. Um, Becky is Tommy's love interest, but here he is with, with uh, uh, jo Joe, Jimmy Joe, jo Johnny Joe, um, the bad guy of uh, the bad, the bad Gatling brother. Um, and she's telling him that she's not actually his girl, no matter how much he wants yeah. it to be. And I'm going to put your picture up too. I bet you I got the prettiest girl in the outfit. Jimmy Joe, I'm not your girl. And that was that. That was the most dramatic scene of the entire movie until the end. All right. And then um, I just, I, you know, I like to always compare movies to um, The Karate Kid. And this is a really good example of where our um, our uh, main hero here who keeps getting picked on by all these people until he can't take no more. I keeps kind of antagonizing these people. Tommy, you be sure to spell our names right. Make sure you do it right. I'm gonna find me a failure, a failure who is yeller. See, I, I, and I, I, I'm not trying to sound like I'm Mr. Courage either, but I think I could take that. I think I could take people singing a song. <laughs> move on with your day. <laughs> yeah, you know, if 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 they just right. sang a song that they knew, um, uh, if they're just singing a song that they knew, um, I guess that's nice. And if they wrote that song, even better. And uh, so here we go. And green and red, white and blue. <laughs> Jimmy Joe's gonna get you good. He's gonna get you real good. Maybe teach you how to be a real man. Let's do it, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. Come on back here, Tommy boy. Yeah, he. I don't know. I just feel like some of this, you know, it's not. Is, is that turning the other cheek? 
No, that's, that's pretty. I don't. I don't know if you've ever had that done to you in the high school parking lot, but I definitely had that happen to me. <laughs> I don't think I. I was not very happy after. Oh, you mean spraying with the with the 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 water the potholes? The potholes in the parking lot oh. get splashed. Oh, I thought you meant people singing. And I mean, song. oh, the, the- I was going to say though, Cam, you've had people splash water on you. I've had people sing songs about me. Oh man. You guys, yeah, we were, won't we won't repeat the word, but they were hurtful. Were we guys, all know what Corey rhymes with. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, were you guys courting the same girl? Anyway, uh, <laughs> does that make sense? Um, okay, th- and this this next scene is like the dumbest thing I've ever clipped. Uh, I've clipped thus far. You know, there's still hope. Um, I just want to say that he comes into this. Uh, Mag- you know the, the corner store here to look at uh, magazines is what she was also looking at, and I know this is really small here, but um, there is not a lot of options. There's multiple different life magazines, life, life, life. and this Collier's magazine and Look magazine. Um, I, anyway, I I just think it's funny that he stands there for any convincing amount of time trying to decide <laughs> which which magazine to get. Okay, cool. um, That'll be fine. And that's the only reason I, I. You know what? That's a lie. I'm gonna rewind this. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to hear this. It's so quiet. It's it's even quiet on my screen. You guys aren't gonna get the full effect. But um, whatever this lady is listening to is absolutely amazing. And if you can hear it. I'll be right back. Okay. That'll be fine. Yeah, it's it, like one of those really, really uncomfortable, um, like self-affirmation. Yeah, like the tapes. Yeah, yeah, because it says, "Yeah, oh, I, you're you're really likable. Everybody wants to be just like you, and uh, you're the best mother in the world." Like it's weird. Like, what is she listening to? She, she was you're, listening to a a self-motivating podcast, probably <laughs> <laughs> on cassette while on the clock uh, on cassette and. Whatever, well, whatever, whatever year that was, nineteen thirties. I mean, so there wouldn't have been cassettes. Either. Oh, jeez, it, it would have been. A, it would have been, well, I mean, it would have been on like a stone record with a um with a pterodactyl's beak. I guess it would have really. Sorry, I'm getting, getting all history. The whole thing has to go, and then he uh, and then he repeats it. <laughs> he just grinds his. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I think I have more bullying going on. Oh, part of the human condition. Um, this guy, this guy, you know, um, I, I, I feel like I, we talk about uh, the same things a lot, but um, this guy, uh, his name is in the, in the movie here, his name is Car Wash. Um, he's kind of like a secondary uh, voice of reason for this fella, uh, for Tommy. Um, and, uh, he gives a pretty dramatic war story here, but because he's like half deaf and he, and he yells in this weird, you know, Cajun Southern accent, this redneck kind of accent, fake accent, bad accent, um, that I, you don't really take him all that seriously. But anyway, the actor who played this guy, um, was, uh, in, um, a, a movie called fire in the sky with, um, with one of our favorite actors, uh, DB Sweeney from, uh, from my uh, uh, cutting edge. So anyway, moving on. Um, oh, I had mine chin. all right. Never told you about that. No. Damn German whiz bang got both my ears. <laughs> Part of my brain too, I reckon. Why well, couldn't stand up straight for a full year? Yeah. <laughs> all yeah. I can think about are the sometimes I. I, I talked to those people in person, yeah. you know, like, uh, I, I know that guy, <laughs> but it, uh, the way he's speaking is it's hard to, t- to feel the, um, any empathy because he's, he's talking like such a character, you know, there I go. a couple of, a couple of German whiz bangs by my ears right there. Yeah. Those Germans were slaughtering people in their, in their families, but and then the whiz bang, <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, this this scene um, again. He's being picked on by. Remember the 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 main brother has gone off to war. Right? Yeah, is that what's his name? Uh, G- okay, G- the main G- character is Tommy, and that's like Jimmy Joe. Gian. 
Jim Joe. It? Jimmy Joe. Jim, yeah, Jimmy Joe. All right, so this is his brothers. So really, his brothers do most of the damage. Uh, the, the only thing we've seen so far is him verbally interact with Becky and then also throw a cake in the in Tommy's face. The rest of it is all of his brothers. Um, so I, I really feel like the bad guy is not the baddest guy here. Um, yet, 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 yeah. yet. I'm not condoning any behavior here. But um, anyway, I wanted to show this scene because it's um, it, it it's weird. <laughs> somebody ought to teach you some manners, Paul Gatlin. Oh, yeah? Well, somebody ought to teach this creep some manners. Splashing mud on folks. Which I agree. He shouldn't have done that. That's not turning the other cheek. That's not being the better man. Your mother'd like to see you, I expect. Chewing tobacco and acting like trash. <laughs> And my brother'd like to see you hanging around with old Yellow Belly here. Come on, Becky, let's go. Hey, where are you hurry, belly. Tommy? Have a cut of tobacco. No, thank you. And that's and, and there's so they want to share his tobacco? I don't get it. Yeah, well, we could have had like, a little sandbox like a... scene there. Like, he just tries <laughs> it. He's like, yeah, I'm tough. <laughs> Isn't that like a like a kind gesture? Like, here, yeah, yeah. have some tobacco and share it with me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we're we're in the we're in the Great Depression as we speak. I'm going to offer, you know, olive, olive leaf of, of tobacco. Oh, go ahead. Come on, try it. That's no sense. Hey, look out, Paul. He's turning pale. I think he's liable to throw up on you. No, now, now he ain't pale. <laughs> now, that there's his natural color. Ain't it, Tommy? Yellow. <laughs> you know, you should not be out with Jimmy Joe's girl. Especially with him away to fin in the country and all. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Joe ain't got nothing to worry about. Look at him. Ain't no man. I mean, he's only at boot camp, but and then this is the scene. This is where it is. It's just this is what makes it weird. He ain't no man. I, I don't know if I should give it away. I'll just play it. I'll just play it. He ain't no man. Maybe we can just find him out. down and see what kind of a man he is. Yeah, let's deep pants him. Let's deep pants him. <laughs> I didn't catch that when I watched it. <laughs> let's deep pants him. You know, like, and, and they're all like, yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, what time is it? It's deep pants time. All right. Uh, I, anyway, weird scene. And then I, uh, and then uh, Uncle uh, Preacher Man uh, saves him. Well, yeah, uh, Kenny, Kenny Rogers' beard comes out and saves the day. And, and so, and then, again, Corey, I'm not picking on you at all. But this is, this is the scene I immediately thought of when you, t when you texted me that you liked this movie. <laughs> This is the exact scene I thought of, because this is the most unlikely scene in any movie, and I've. This seen is awful. <laughs> this scene, like, it, oh my god, play it. Yeah, well, I'm gonna set it up here. The set, the yeah. setup here is Tommy works a lot of jobs, and by the way, he he mentions two of them are volunteer jobs, so I don't know why he's <laughs> doing them. Why stretch yourself out that thin? Your mother, your yeah. mother needs your help. Uh, the farm can't take care of itself. All right, so I uh, so he is extremely tired. So tired at this logging factory. What I don't know what you call it. What, log, I don't know you call this. I don't know anything about logging. I think logging factory is a good name for it. Yeah. You are getting sleepy. All asleep. <laughs> By the way, how did it turn back on? There's oh. a Bond villain in the. Because it was stuck. It was stuck, and they told me to go on break, and then it got unstuck. Oh, okay. I, I remember them saying go on break. Just stop it. You thought that other scene was the most dramatic scene of the movie? Ooh. Oh, my dear. Watch this scene. <laughs> You know, I, do, beard. I do want to point out that, um, and I made a couple other quick clips here um, uh, about this movie, but I, I, everything in this movie takes this long. Oh yeah. Um, just, uh, you know, every like, okay, actually, you know what? We're going to take a, a quick pause. So the, my problem with this movie, the most biggest problem I have with this movie, just, and I'm not some genius that knows how to write a movie. I don't know how to write a movie, but <laughs> In the song, the message is from the father, right? The the dialogue of the song is is 
okay, it's sung from the uncle's perspective of what the son or the the the, the father says to the son, right? And that he's the he's his um he's his he's his father's brother, so he has to take care of him now, right? But um the father is not in this movie. They wasted any a bit of you caring about this promise to not lift a hand against another person. They wasted all of it by not having that promise in the movie. It's only referred to in the song and then this weird conversation with his uncle. You never see the dad. You don't see the dad die. It, and there's, there's zero. We have, as a viewer, you have zero connection to any of this. And then why? And then what's a bigger problem for me as a, as a movie watcher is that you have these super stupid long scenes that nothing happens, and and they could. It's not like they didn't have time to get anybody to be the father and and just and, right. all right. Right. So moving on to our eight minutes of death on the logger here. It's hey, very. Tommy's still working with you. Wrong. Yeah, he's still up top, Matthew. He's taking a nap up there. <laughs> I like it. he's screaming over the machinery and it's like, <laughs> it's still not enough to wake him up. You gotta get done whacked on the head. <laughs> um, Man. I, so okay, so he falls yeah, he falls asleep on this logging device. I I, I just I just I I call shenanigans. That is that is I just do not believe it. In, I was waiting for him to be like, ah, I'm just pranking you. Yeah, or, <laughs> you know, but and and he's in the sitting position nonetheless. In the sit, and it wasn't like he fell asleep while it was already running. He fell asleep and then it started moving. You're sitting up. I don't know. I'm somebody who has a hard time sleeping on an airplane, and and that's and that's pretty calm. <laughs> yeah, I I'm calling bluff on that one. There's no way that somebody could sleep through that. Especially, especially. I mean. He's the coward of an entire county. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like, like my cat only sleeps with his back against the wall because that's his un, you know, unprotected <laughs> spot of his, of, you know, and, and that cat has nothing to fear other than himself. Right. So, all right. Uh, moving on. Uh, more, more antagonizing uh, of Tommy here. This is where they try to run him off the road. Check out that mirror. And this this chase scene is way way longer, right? It's way longer. I trimmed it down. And before you guys are like, you could have just said there was a chase scene. I needed to show you the chase scene because of this scene. And I tried to keep this for the most part. There's there's two other clips that end up in this part. So I, I clipped those out. You know what I'm saying? Like they they transition to another part of the movie um, during this part. But this is what I'm talking about. How long is this unnecessary scene? So he got ran off the road by the Gatlin brothers. There they go. And now he's got to clean up the mess. Depression that's valuable lumber. <laughs> I'm just saying, we could have traded this for a scene with dad in prison. And then uh, uh, car wash comes by, and so does I. Uh, so does I, uh, uh, Becky. Um, and then I. Uh, anyway, you know how we really feel about you. <laughs> no, like, that dude's your color. <laughs> it sure fits him. <laughs> all right. So my gripe with that particular scene, like when I watched it, all I could think about were the other people in the town. And how upset they would be with the people. Like, why did you let paint all over this sign? Like, like this is we're, this is our volunteer sign, and now it's all ruined. But nobody cares. 
No. Who cares? And, well, and, and they're not going to care because those 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 rascals are going to be up to even worse here in a minute. But um, eh. I you know, Ralph. Okay, so so up to this point, he's been caked, he's been painted, he's been ran off the road, and he got sang. He pant. Oh, almost a pants. Yeah, almost a pants. Um, almost yep. almost offered chewing tobacco. Uh, and then and then. <laughs> And then saying it in a in a un unfavored manner. Right? Okay, so unsavory. Uh, well, that should have been probably like a dare, like ad. Yeah. Tobacco? No. <laughs> Not even once. <laughs> Not even once. <laughs> and, then, and then and then and yeah, that's a great. Oh my gosh, you're yeah, that'd be a great dare ad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then at the end, to pants them. <laughs> Instead this is of tobacco, what happens if you don't pants. smoke, <laughs> yeah, you get the pants. Okay, <laughs> so, okay, and then this scene makes this scene makes zero sense. If you thought that the log riding, you know, um, I the 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 the, the was it the the flume at the Valley Fair uh, scene was was uh, <laughs> was was, was uh, the problem of the movie. It's this scene. So he. He just decided that um, Becky is the gal for him, right? And I uh, and that you know he needs to take this to another level. Forget you know Jimmy Joe and uh, and his brothers. He's gonna, but this is not Becky. No, she's one of the brothers' girlfriends. This is the girl that he was in the um in the 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 sham of a of a um. Magazine music, store. Musical chairs. No, musical chairs. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Musical chairs. He this was his partner. Right? Here we go. You won't mind. So she's gonna step out on her dude because he's Just passed out. Wake up the whole house. Hey, come on, let's go. Where? Well, we could go back to the blue room and pick up some beer. Get anyway, uh, what is he doing with this girl? It, pre preaching, okay. You ever, he's preaching again. I don't know how this this scene advances this movie forward at all because Not, uh, the, the move the the scene right before this is when him and Becky are kind of play fighting, and he realizes that this is the girl for him. Right, he realizes it, and then it cuts to him going to the bar and talking with Violet. Right? So the scene before this, this is when he was like working on the stump. No, right? no, 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 no. Oh, okay. This is okay. when they're That's in later. his house. They're in his house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and they kind of like tackle each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know what you're talking about with the with the with the with the mud fight, the mud sling. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yep. And and I uh, yeah. He not only gets uh, the the Gatling brothers muddy, he also gets back anyway. This guy, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a real life pig pen, right? Um, Okay, so, so it goes right from the Violet scene with um with him in the car, you know, the, him and Violet alone in the car, outside of one of the Gatling uh, brothers' house, um to to Jimmy Joe coming back. We, don't, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. The cop, the version I saw of this movie, there is no proposal scene. Uh, I. Don't think I saw a proposal scene. Yeah, it goes right from Violet talking to him in the car, um, and who knows what we don't even know how that ended, right? Well, um, uh, another thing about this particular scene, and I'm not trying to like nitpick, but maybe I am. But like, why was she even there? Like, well, I, you know, you got to think that it wasn't just Jimmy Joe coming back, right? But I mean, like, she didn't like. Get excited for anyone else getting off of the tr the bus, and then he got off, and she was like, "Oh, I gotta get out of here." Yeah, you know, and, <laughs> and then she bolts. <laughs> and also, I'm like, you know, I, I I I guess I would think that for her to be the better person would be to let him have this moment, and maybe if if you feel like he needs more closure, um, tell him later. But waiting until he gets five steps off the, this bus to tell him you're marrying some other dude. To a, a guy who's already flies off the handle easily enough. I mean, I just this guy cheated at musical chairs. I'm saying you don't. I'm not saying. I, I do not twist my words. I'm not saying she deserves the assault that she inevitably no. gets. I'm not yeah. at all saying that. I'm just saying that 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 we didn't. 
we didn't build this up right. And I'm not even saying that the people in the movie or the characters in the movie. I'm saying this movie is so squeaky clean of 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 any type of of you know showing anything dark and rough that it makes this dark and rough ending seem ludicrous. It seems it seems sure. insane, right? I mean, not as insane as being on a logging machine. <laughs> and not waking up and yeah. somehow falling asleep in the sitting position. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Hey, Vicky. Hey. Hi. Hi. Well, don't I even get a welcome? Hmm. Looks like the whole town's giving you a pretty big welcome, don't you think? He did right. Oh. No picture, neither. Jimmy, I thought we settled all that before you left. Yeah, but I was hoping maybe you change your mind. Jimmy, I'm getting married to Tommy Spencer. Okay. Tommy Spencer. So when I saw this part, the very first time I ever saw this scene, I thought she was lying mm, because we okay. never saw a proposal. Right, we don't. And and also he was he was hanging out with Violet just hours ago. Right, that is really confusing. Like, yeah, what it, I just like I'm I'm trying to I haven't watched this in a few years, and I had it clear in my mind that they were together, and you threw that other scene in, and I was like, what? <laughs> but but that's a good point. I mean, like, did he? Why did he do that with with Violet? Like, was it was he just I don't know. Like, it didn't make it much sense to me. Or was he trying to like get back at the brothers? No, I I I more think that if it. If they were tr- had any thought into this at all, it was that maybe I'm not going to marry. I'm not going to marry this. Uh, I'm not going to marry Becky. I'm just going to be a regular dude hanging out with Violet, you know, because at she, a bar. Yeah, yeah. because 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 th- Becky's taken by this guy that she can't s- seem to say that she's not taken with enough, right? Right. Um. All right. <laughs> and then here is the scene. And any viewers that are watching this, um. It doesn't get graphic. It is a TV, TV Joe, movie. What are you doing here? But the imagery is enough. Jerry Joe, please leave. It was supposed to be you and me. Well, now it's going to be you and me. Get out of my house. Get out of my house. Let's we'll see if he wants you there. All right. So then they they assault this 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 girl. Now we also do not get to see Tommy get to learn this we don't get to see how he learns that this happens we just know that he learned it and then goes to this bar um yep. and then this is that scene where he locks the door like they're they're antagonizing him you know what are you going to do about it you never you never you're not gonna throw a punch you know um what about the promise you made to your to your dad you know whatever and then um you say that door is, is the, part of my favorite scene yes i i know and thank you because i i made sure to include it Okay, go go on. Yes, because I love that door. Yes, <laughs> this door is the same stuff that those really nice posters that you used to buy at Spencer's were made out of. <laughs> um, like this is like that door doesn't need that oh. many bolts. Like the. <laughs> <laughs> I also just real quick pause. I think this is the reason they have that uh, sign that says this door must remain unlocked during business hours because <laughs> of this scene. Yep. <laughs> That's the only thing I remember from the from the last bit of this movie is the three-year-old joke there just pop back to me. <laughs> so it's like it's like that scene in like the Kingsman where he locks the door to keep them in. Yeah. You know? All right. And I this isn't we're not gonna watch the whole fight because that would take all night. Because this is this fight's like a ten minutes long, where they could have they could have had a scene with the dad ta- talking. To, Once you know, again, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I wish they would have. I was gonna say, I wish they would have added some pows and kerplunks. Oh, no doubt. This. No, I'm. I, 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 man, you, we are, we are, <laughs> we are in sync tonight. Uh, not the band. I, uh, I, but I, uh, we're, um, we're, we are, I, I, we are feeling each other's wavelengths here because. I also was going to say that this feels like a Batman fight. Like it's 19, 1966 <laughs> Batman. Um, yep. They should have done the, the, the crooked angle though. They call the Dutch, the Dutch angle, whatever. Yep. Right. And 
how many jukeboxes have to, you know, in any country music related movie, a jukebox has to be injured. Um, but anyway, this actually play. It, it actually, um, I'm gonna rewind this. It's it's hilarious that it prompts there to be fight music. <laughs> That was like a Fonzie move where you, instead of you like thumping your hand on it, you threw a body at it. All right. So I, this is really towards the end of the fight now. I, I skipped ahead. I really enjoyed the, the set pieces during this bar fight. Yeah. Like you, can, you can just see how everything is like perfectly played. It, it was a great fight. It was a great and, bar fight. And you, and you can feel how, see how everything is um, I, styrofoam. The stakes <laughs> yep. were real in this one. <laughs> All right, here it comes. Okay, the cheering, the smiling. They were just celebrating him. The fiance. Still back at home. Yeah. All In right. whatever condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I anyway, let's let's watch the door again. Finish him. <laughs> I don't know how much of this clip you have. Oh no, no, I show it, right? It's gonna it's the best part of the door is still <laughs> is still ahead. Let's go. I really wish I really wish uh I Kenny Kenny Rogers would have let left a tip for the trouble. You know, this should cover <laughs> that been good. The, you know, this should cover the mess. You know threw it on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> All right, watch this door. <laughs> that door is like a centimeter thick. Um, like, why did they just walk? I just thought it was just so funny how they the hole. Like, yeah. just walk through the hole. Oh man, I don't know why that. It made me laugh when I watched it. I'm like, why didn't they just walk through it instead of like, you know, politely op- unlocking it, and opening it up, okay. and then closing it behind them? <laughs> if that lock. And that handle weighs a half a pound. This entire door still weighs less than one pound. <laughs> <laughs> Look how thin that door is. Okay, l- l- listen. In the real life of of the world here, my cursor is wider than the door. Anyway, never mind. Uh, all right. Uh, th- th- this cursor's not actual size. All right. Um, that was. Uh, uh, oh, I no. I do have one more scene. I have one more scene, and this is. Um, all right. I uh, so so should we sh- should we share like our, our our personal um stories about this movie? Um so I discovered this movie. I knew about it. I knew about this movie, but I discovered it for myself uh during the, pa- the pandemic. Um and I I didn't find it on purpose. I actually again, I was watching some I think it was on YouTube. I found it and um and I think I was watching something else and fell asleep and I saw the very end of this movie. And I saw what the the aunt said, or the mom says, the mom um, says, and I about her her future daughter in law, and um and I I was like, wait, is doesn't this movie have like an assault in it? And I had to rewatch it, and I was like, oh my god, why would they, why would they say this? Um, and then I immediately called Cam, and told him you gotta watch this movie. <laughs> you know, that was is uh, that when you watched it, Cam? Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, he told me about it and. And then, uh, so I was, I was, uh, I was living in an apartment at the time and my buddy's apartment at the beginning of the pandemic, worst timing, I had a huge fire in it. And so he was living with us, uh, and we were like all into watching, you know, B movies and stuff. And I think we got like that first night, like maybe one third of the way through. And we were like, screw this dude. We're let's watch power Rangers instead. <laughs> And then the next morning I made breakfast and finished it. And I was like, man, I should have watched Power Rangers this morning. <laughs> oh. now we're, talk- 
Are we talking the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that was a classic. Uh, that was that was some pandemic chow for me. Oh no! As much as as much of terrible things I say about this movie, it's still you have to you have to know what it is. This is like yeah, yeah. I had is, to finish it, but yeah, this, this is just like this is like um, that that real dirty street in your town. You can't just avoid it. You got to see what's down there or else you, you, or <laughs> you got to drive down it. Sometimes a history will splash you know, people on the side with the, with the muddy water. Those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. <laughs> so anyway, okay, here's, here's, here's this scene and you cannot take this in any other way. And I'm going to give away the line because I need you. I need you to feel it in your heart. The um, what she I'm trying to remember word for word. I think she says, "Well, I'm glad we have that behind us." Yeah, and I, and I don't want to keep saying the words, but like, I, this this girl was gang raped, right? Like, and good and, thing it's behind us. And I swear to anybody watching this, I'm not making jokes about this. It's it's, it's horrific. It's 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 terrible. But this movie does not give it any kind of sensitivity at mm-hmm. all, and that. And that is the humor of of what we're getting at is that 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 we we think that just because this that that these guys go to jail that this girl is going to be fine, and um I, I I don't know and and the the whole turn the other cheek don't fight you know thing it it just it doesn't work it doesn't work in the, in this extreme of a, of a of a circumstance had you never seen the movie and only looked at the lyrics of the song you would have at least felt something for these people and empathy and, and, but now it, it feels like I, I feel even worse for this. If this was real life, I feel even worse that this girl is in a town full of just like absent minded, like just in this, I'd feel like I'm in some bizarro world that we're opposite day where we just don't care about that. Right. We care more about a cake in the face. Right. I mean, anyway, so um, here we go. Oh, I wonder if Becky knows. Yeah, I went by and told her on the way over here. She looks good, Emma. She's got fire in her eyes again. You know, she says Tommy writes her regularly from boot camp. Oh, I'm glad that's behind us. How are you feeling? Not and like, not. and like, no, like, and then, and then he went off and got hit by a German whiz bang. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> to, to, Yeah, to, to, he had to live in in the car wash's shoes. Um. So something about the song that I did notice when they when they start rolling the like the end credits and whatnot. So, and I don't know if you were going to bring this up, but I'll bring it up anyway. <laughs> um. So the chorus, the last line, you know, is you know, uh, if you're weak, you turn you turn you know. Okay, if it won't mean you're weak, you turn the other cheek. I hope you're old enough to understand, son. You don't need to fight to be a man. All right. So. But the last chorus says, and Papa, I should I should hope you understand sometimes you gotta fight when you're a man. Like he's no longer a coward anymore. Yeah, and I, I don't necessarily believe that I any of that any that you felt any of that in this movie. I don't believe no. I don't believe that any of that rank that like <clears throat> the song it, is way more powerful than the movie. Yeah. You, I uh, like there's, there's, um, I, well, how to say this? Um, if you don't, it, I, I guess back to the, if you don't have the dad and you don't have the promise, you do not have this story. And, and, and if you don't listen to the lyrics during like the, the movie, it's pretty <laughs> easily missed. Yeah. You know? And it's like when the book nerds say that the book was better, is the song was better. <laughs> the song was better than the movie. <laughs> well, and, I, and I, I'm gonna say, you know, uh, well, I guess maybe just go back to the other direction. You know, the uh, sadly the song doesn't mention anything about the the musical chairs. It doesn't mention the um, the cake. Uh, it doesn't mention the the the, the paint. paint, the mustard, yeah. or the, uh, the, uh, the the mud. The um, it doesn't mention the log. And that, that that log scene had nothing to do with the Gatlin brothers. Had he just died right there, Becky would have been spared. This town would have been fine. <laughs> uh, uh, Kenny Rogers would still be a preacher, right? I uh, like 
There's anyway, there's a Everything lot. Everything would be j- just out as it was. Yeah. You know, um, for such a religious and preachy movie, uh, maybe God did have a plan right there. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Any? Uh, and I guess anything. Yeah, anything else on on this on this one? Do we want to do our ratings after towards yeah, the end? Yeah. Both well, of these. Yeah. Let's let's talk about our next movie. What? Uh. Yeah. What? What's the next uh beard movie? Do we have with Kenny Rogers in it? I got a six pack. So Ooh. I wrote this one. Um, Kenny Rogers plays a race car driver named Brewster who finds himself stuck with a six pack of thieving orphans. These little rascals know a thing or two about cars and prove to be a big help with Brewster's career, becoming a first-rate pit crew for him. Brewster grows attached to the whippersnappers, but eventually he has to choose between them and winning a big race. Uh, Man, I want you to write, like, I want you to write my eulogy. (laughs) That was was, was actually really good. Like... (laughs) Is that why you asked me about whippersnappers earlier? Yeah, before I was like, "Is it? Can we? See, is that a canceled word?" Or <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I can't take any credit for the beard. I can't say this is what I didn't want to accomplish. It's just genetic. All right, we had some uh, technical difficulties. We got um, it was a ghost in the machine, a ghost of a of of Kenny Rogers' beard. So uh, yeah, we actually his beard came in and disrupt. And this is actually not everything. our first uh, technical difficulty we've had with this show. Um, I, so it was my fault. I take the blame. Um, but I, but here we're back to finish this episode. Uh, my favorite episode so far. Um, so Cam, I just gave us a wonderful synopsis of the did I? of the movie. What? Yeah, yeah, you I don't did. remember yeah. that. Um, it was past it was, cam, yeah. your, your future cam now. I want to go back. No, you can't. You can't interact with your past self, um, or else, or else, Kenny you Rogers, never, Kenny Rogers' yeah, beard cannot. starts to disappear. Oh no! <laughs> uh, that would ruin this movie. And I like that I did this when I said beard. Like you guys wouldn't know what I was referring to. Never seen other, one before. Otherwise, um, all right. So, getting the stupid out of the way here. All right, so I um, I I agree with with uh, with Cam's uh, write up about this movie. The um I uh, my my the my take is very similar. It's I uh, I uh, you got you know some of the brat pack uh some some a listers uh that um that were all children in this movie, and then you got um I uh, all partnered with with Kenny Rogers, and and this is really his probably his most dramatic role. Um, of all of his movies, I and uh, this was not a made-for-TV movie, um, like uh, *Coward of the County* was. This was um, released in theaters. Um, and I'll, uh, on a personal note, I, I this was my sister's favorite movie, right? Um, and this was like, I this was like one of those movies that got replayed. Like this was a a Saturday or a Sunday Sunday afternoon movie. Like you, there was a good five years where you couldn't turn on the TV at noon on a Sunday and this wasn't playing. And so at our house, we always had to watch it. Cause my sister liked it a lot. Um, Corey, who is in you this know, movie? What? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say what's, what's interesting is that I watched it on a Sunday afternoon. I, I did that. Sometimes you just, so that got, makes sense. Sometimes uh, you have to do it with what, you know, what feels right. You know, that's right. Uh, yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you who was in this movie. Do you want to know? You want to know who was well, in this movie? Well, I think Kenny Rogers was in this one. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, obviously, we had uh, Kenny Rogers. Uh, Kenny Rogers is beard was in this movie as well. A couple cool cars, but uh, more importantly, uh, Michael Anthony Hall. Uh, I think you're familiar with him uh, mainly from his um, his role in The Dark Knight. He was the the host on the television show inside of the movie, and I'm pretty sure that's where he got his big start and his big fame from. Um, yeah, I, Anthony Michael Hall. I, I, yeah, that's that's what I, I know said him. it. Right. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I know him from. I uh, no, he was he was a he was a original. <laughs> I keep saying Michael Anthony Hall. He was um he was an uh, an original uh, uh brat pack. You know um uh, this was 
pretty you know early on in his career before he got to do the dark knight um he was in um you know the vacation movies and 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 such um but yes uh uh his later career is where he you know he peaked right with with the dark knight who else is in this movie yeah uh diane lane um if you're familiar with her um what you know what i'm familiar with her is she's uh she's the mother of clark kent in the superman movies and in, and in batman versus superman <laughs> yes 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 yeah um the with yes. uh with the uh the martha you know why did you say that name yeah. yeah and then will smith's like uh you know take my mother or my wife's name out of your <laughs> take my mother's name keep my mother's name out of your mouth <laughs> oh will smith all right um uh sorry my my video i kind of i'm kind of doing multi-duty here Okay. Well, Trent, I have a quick question for you. you are, are you a Batman guy? I am a Batman guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, I. Um, I. I have. Uh, I'm. I. You know. I, I guess I don't think I know everything about Batman, but I, I, Batman has just been. You know, I it can't mess with me. Really, I like everything Batman. Um, and so I. Yeah, I think. I think we were on our last attempt at this. I was telling you guys about my car, right? So, yeah, yeah. so I, I drive, um, a black Jeep, uh, renegade. Um, and the reason for that is I made a list a long time ago of all the things I was going to own. And one of them was, I was going to own a Batmobile and, and that's just increasingly becoming more and more out of reach. Um, but, uh, when the Batman versus Superman movie came out, I, 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 so I decided that I could buy, maybe I'd buy, um, a Bruce Wayne car, right? Like that'd be close enough. And so I was, mm-hmm. I had my eye on the, um, on the Lamborghini from the dark Knight. Um, but when the Batman versus Superman movie came out, uh, Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne is driving a black Jeep renegade. And so I, I'm not joking. I immediately went and bought a, a, a black Jeep renegade cause it was in my price range. And, uh, so if you're ever in the Minneapolis area and you see a, a, a black Jeep renegade with a. Wayne, Wayne Enterprises Applied Science Division license plate. Um, that's 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 uh, that's me. I, I just I probably just cut you off well, by using a blinker. It's not Batman. It's not black. It's not it's Batman. It's not no. the real one. Yeah. No. Uh, ben Affleck. It's has well, yeah. It's not group. the real one. It's Ben Affleck. <laughs> He's not the worst Bruce Wayne. <laughs> He's not the worst Bruce Wayne. I liked. I, I didn't mind his Bruce Wayne. <laughs> His ba- so six pack, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry to derail. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay, so let's let's get into the movie. Let's get into the movie. We'll talk about more stars as they as they as they they pop up on the screen. So um, the movie starts off with the entire song, right? So I don't. I, it's funny that they didn't call this movie "Love Will Turn You Around." Um, uh, because uh, that the song is the theme of the movie because they it must be because they keep playing it over and over again. So if you miss it in the beginning here, you can run, you can hide, you, uh, you'll can you catch it again. I do have to bring up that um that riff, the 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 guitar riff, the dun 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 is very very similar to Shine by. By the '90s post uh, grunge band uh, collective soul, um, I mean it, it, it's it's uncanny how close they are together. Um, you can't unhear it once you once you once you put it together. You can't. You can't. No. Um. Oh, and back to Diane Lane. Uh, not only is she known for being Martha Kent, I uh, she was in another movie. Um. I uh, called The Outsiders. Right. And so what I think is interesting is mm-hmm. in this movie, she hangs out with a bunch of people that work on cars yet in the outsiders, uh, her group of people are very, very against the greasers. Um, and so much so that somebody has to die because of it. Um, so this is before she changed colors or switched teams. All right. Aaron gray is in this movie. Aaron gray. I, 
I, I, I'll just say it, like the, the my, what what I thought what I found funny to me, uh, I is when I saw that Aaron Gray is in this movie is that she went from uh being in Buck Rogers of the 25th century to Kenny Rogers of the 20th. I so um she was in Buck Rogers and the uh, of the 25th century um and that was her that was her main role. Um, she's in another show I'll talk about in a minute here. I, I like to think that he's listening to his own song there and being like, yeah, you we've know. all done it before Trent. Come yeah. on. Well, no, but, but like, like retro, he's like, he's like, you know what? Love that guy's right. Love yeah, will turn this guy's <laughs> talking about some real, real stuff, man. I feel, I feel it in my denim. Anyway. <laughs> Right when a man's given all that he planned And he thinks he's got just what he needs Life will deliver a shot to feel shivering Driving him down to his knees Make him start getting Look at all the look, All of those kids went on to be super mega famous All household names Good old Benji Living again Music uh, this is just a weird last credit to put on there as oh. we're listening to a <laughs> oh no I, I wanted to stop on this credit okay so this, oh yeah <laughs> this is an interesting credit here um i a because it's 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 unique to have the song a song put in the be opening credits right like to, to have the <laughs> right but it doesn't say it doesn't say like you know who the rest of the band members were that perform it. It's a sung by Kenny Rogers, which is suspect here. Um, uh, and then the words and music by even Stevens, uh, David Malloy, uh, Tom <laughs> Scheuler and Kenny Rogers. It seems weird that we have that. And I don't know if you guys can see my mouse here. I'm circling the and if you guys can't read it, uh, it just seems like we just tacked him on here. I don't know where, you know, Kenny Rogers is getting a lot of credits in this just short, you know, opening text here. That tricks you he was going for the Oscar for most credit. Yeah, the, the hat trick. Okay. So now we get right into the movie. Like, just turbo start, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know, the, 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 the start of the race. It's a car movie. Yeah. So yes, we, it's a racing movie, so Turbo is good. So we're gonna um here. Let's let's back this just up a little bit because I don't want I don't want you guys to miss this stellar scene. Back too far. Yeah, this my doesn't hurt anybody to listen to this song again. Hey pops, how about ten bucks worth of regular while I use your Johns? Man, that guy could sleep through anything, including if he was all like <laughs> sitting on a log as as the machine was yeah. was chopping him up. Um, no, it's like I, the only exa- known example of uh, and action for <laughs> snore. <laughs> you could snore on cue. That was in his <laughs> resume. Yeah. Um. Okay, so then he goes and gets uh, locked in the bathroom, and um, and I. Uh, uh, that thing, I don't think I show that. They they kind of don't yeah, show no. much. They don't show much here because they they don't want to imply that he was in the bathroom for that long to get all of his stuff stolen off his car. I mean, um, but I yeah, that's a a great opening. So scene. not not only did I watch this Sunday afternoon movie on a Sunday afternoon, but I also was having chili. While Kenny was having chili during that, this scene, that's so, like be in the description. If we're talking about connections, that's like there it is. That's like virtual reality or something. Like that's like you um, being <laughs> so immersed in it. You know, um, uh, did you also? Were you also driving a race car or no? Were you stealing car parts? I, I'm trying to. Re- I'm trying to figure out which role you would be. Are you one of the kids? I mean, I cannot deny or confirm that on this podcast um so i would have to say (laughs) yeah 
I would have to say, um, I, I'm the next role. I'm the person we see next. That's who I am. The, that that's a good role. The waitress. Yeah. That's right with the belt. Let's see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, uh, I do want to mention that. Look, look at this decor. Um, a beer bottle. I uh, what you got there? Beer bottle with flowers in it. <laughs> I um, didn't notice that before. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <that's, laughs> Uh, this is a classy joint here. Um, you think that's the same beer bottle that Stallone had and over the top? Oh my gosh, I uh, I don't think so. But man, would it's that a prop? Would that be an amazing <laughs> connection? Uh, that would be. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what I could do. Oh, what I do with myself if these were connected somehow. <laughs> um, okay, you know what? What Corey was mentioning is the belt. The belt here is is clever, and I don't know. I don't know if this was a if this was a thing back then. Um, I, I hope so. I, I just want to believe this 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 movie wouldn't lie to me. Um, so this woman is wearing this like heavyweight champion of the world belt um, that's also a radio. <laughs> that's sick. That's cool. That's you know what? That's technology. That so awesome. Can you imagine you know ha having a radio so small it would fit on your belt? <laughs> I, I, just, I, I didn't even realize I was so distracted by the belt in this scene. It's the the joke is that she was talking about the chili. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Also, a pretty lame joke to open up with. Yeah. Well, and and this also starts the um the whole um uh, I uh, the allure of Kenny Rogers or his beard. Uh, that women are just falling head over heels for this dude. Right, and um, starting with this lady. It's okay. I guess I'm just not very hungry. Anything else then? Right, bring me another. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> change at station. Sure. So is that is that the radio for the whole diner? <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> the the <laughs> people are like like can you put some music on? They're like nah, she's off today. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you, uh, I, I, yeah, this is what a weird movie. Um, I, <laughs> all right. Also, this is the, this is ever since this scene was shot it is illegal to wear a hat that big. She's sassy. <laughs> She also plays. I look forward to going to a diner where they just scream like that. I don't know where you order. can find one anymore. I guess maybe in Texas. Yeah, maybe in Texas, wherever wherever that hat is. Yeah, this was in Texas still, right? So, um, I, mm -hmm. but yeah, I uh, I was just gonna mention that this lady plays so hard to get, you know. I'm Lindy. I'm British. Can I ask you a question? Long is this personal. You live around here long. Why? <laughs> I think I've seen this one before. I know exactly what I know what you got in mind. And I'd like to. <laughs> but I'm working. Lady, I got a problem. <laughs> like I told you. Wait till after work and I'll solve it for you. No, I just bet you could. So uh the reason I'm playing this whole scene is um it's it's weird to me that uh, this, <laughs> uh, the the next part here that she um when he asks about the stolen parts so essentially you know he got he was in he was in the the can I think he's you know with the John he was in the John and uh, he got his car parts stolen and so he's trying to find out who did it and he asks her and she's um she asks she she reacts very weird about it kind of implying that she knows something about it. This is never referenced again and throughout the movie, but you know we find out that the sheriff is involved. He's employed some children to steal car parts. Um, it's a big, you know, stolen car part ring that they've got going on a racket, if you would. Um, but I is I don't know if this lady is implying, you know, like her reaction here is implying that she knows about it and just can't talk about it, like it's or, or if she's in on it, like. I, maybe this whole town gets dividends from these stolen parts. I, she almost looks like 
scared or like concerned, like, oh, I'm not talking about this. Yeah, they, you know, yeah, they have, uh, they have my intimidated. Yeah, they have my puppy. They have my puppy, and, and, uh, you know, I, they're gonna do something to him if I say anything. (laughs) You know, someone stole some parts off my car this morning. There's any chance that maybe about time I got back to work. Yeah, she ended that. Turns up the radio so abrupt. She um, <laughs> yeah, she, she she went from uh, you know, from being pretty and interested in that guy to, you know, let me get you your check. Uh, so that it just it seems it seems weird. Yeah, like this is one of those things in movies where I think like I'm supposed to know this. I'm supposed to notice this as a viewer, and then it never really comes up again. Reggie strip down over twilight. All right, so this is where uh, he meets the children. And the uh, the sheriff comes to confront the children about their um, st- stolen parts, and he's confronting the what a scam you got going in, the sheriff. He's confronting the sheriff. That sheriff, by the way, was also in the movie War Games. Um, seems like he just kind of plays that part, that kind of part in his in his life. Um, I also had to mute my phone. I just did it way too late. Um, I didn't have a Lego. You didn't have sword. the Lego Viking. Yeah. <laughs> Who the hell are you? You should know you got all my parts. <laughs> You'd have a hell of a time proving anything. Pick a blind judge or a brother-in-law not to see what you're up to. Let me waste some of this, John. Let me lamb blast you. Shut up, Otis. <laughs> <laughs> Let me waste some. Like, yeah. Really? <laughs> I, I love, Instantly. yeah, like, like that's how real this, this movie could have got. Like, that if they, <laughs> had they chose to go down that path, Otis could have just... You know, clean house right there, and um, and in my in like my perfect world, in my dream world of of Kenny Rogers movies, what would have been amazing if I uh, if Otis would have pulled out his revolver right there and like you know like like with the you know and 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 like loaded it up and then spun the 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 I don't know what you call it you know the the, the barrel the barrel. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's the bear. Whatever. No, um, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, and he and they spun it, and then you like they they had it from a perspective where you can see all the bullets, and he, and he's like six pack. <laughs> it also would have been funny if that's Kenny Rogers awful. had turned to him right there and said, "The only way to win is not to play." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if he was like, "I uh, listen, you got to know when to hold them." Yeah. <laughs> you gotta know when to fold them. All right. I uh, all right, so I okay, so this is our next scene where we get to see uh the the Don Juan of 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 uh you know stock car racing gets uh gets greeted by a, a beautiful woman again just starts instantly making out with him. Um but there's there's actually something else in this scene I want to point out. So this is where we get to meet Aaron Gray or her character at least. And so this is what's weird. She was known for another show, right? She was in an 80s sitcom with Ricky Schroeder called Silver Spoons. And I think it's more than a coincidence that this weird song playing in the background mentions Silver Spoons. Right? I mean, I don't think they're referring to the show, but it seems weird that the lyric from this song would include the show that she's... And th- this would probably been right when the that show started, but um, but it, you almost can't focus on anything other than the weird lyrics to this song because it's like something about rainbow stew. Seems like a song that like kids would it'd be on kids right. kids bop, you know, like some like like I don't know, children's record. Kids kids bop ninety six whatever. Silver Spoon. Watch it, cowboy. Hey, bud. <laughs> Man. Love at first beard sight. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't kissing him. All right. Yeah, just going in for the beard. <laughs> All right. You guys ready for this? The recipe is onions, bell peppers, garlic, <laughs> celery, and carrots. Of how to make a beard? That is rainbow. No, <laughs> that is rainbow stew. 
<laughs> okay. Recipe industry. I, I, ha- I had to look it up. Does That's it- a Merle Haggard song. I, I didn't realize that. Oh yeah, I I, I I haven't been brushing up on my Merle Haggard lately. Um, <laughs> you haven't been. Run- <laughs> you know, I, I I'm a, I'm a, I'll fully admit that I I I don't I don't love country music. Um, that's just not something I've been. Uh, it's just not in tune. You know, some people don't like some people don't like tomatoes. Some people don't like rainbow stew. You know, um, I <laughs> I but um. I don't like, uh, there's still only two kinds of music I don't like, and that's uh, country and Western. Both yeah. kinds? I was say, what's the other one, Austin? <laughs> the only two things in life that scare me. <laughs> country, Western. And what was the other one? The country and Western. Country. Country and Western, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All um, right, sorry, I'm getting off topic here. No, and by the way, I thought Rainbow Stew was a guy's name. <laughs> 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 um that's honestly like l- low-key good drag drag queen names <laughs> <laughs> um, they call me rambo still yes <laughs> um okay so this guy right here um i oh, can i take a picture yeah i don't know this actor's name but he is always the bad guy um it probably most notably as the bad guy from um night court Right. Um, but uh, like he was a recurring character um, on Night Court. He was always like a scumbag. He seems to always play that character. You, This is one of those actors where, you know, if he's if, if he's a great actor, that means, must mean he's a great guy in real life, like the opposite of the characters he <laughs> portrays. But um, I also like to bring up that he's in one of my he was in an episode of one of my favorite shows ever. And it was Manimal. Um, but we'll talk about that on a different episode. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Well. He, he he plays this character so well. Ah. Then the famous Brewster Baker, bunch of midgets for a pit crew. <laughs> oh, they're <Sorry>. children. <laughs> yeah, and also, he's the only one who laughs too. Because he doesn't have a. You know that's that. You know what? That's the thing though. See, like a bully would be somebody who would bring an entourage with, and they just laugh at whatever he says. This guy goes just total solo on this, and. And uh, and just laughs at his own joke. <laughs> That's the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. If you want money, all you had to do is ask, you know. Just checkbook away. You'd see my old boss come do uh, something like this. Kiss off, mister. Or did right. And the kids are just as pleasant. <laughs> all right. Um, we're gonna skip I mean, that. they are criminals. Hardened criminals. Yeah. Um, well, is it is it criminal if you're just doing what the sheriff wants you to do? I think we'll need to take this to night court. <laughs> yeah. Uh, doing anything later? Yeah, I'm making phone calls. So here's like his third victim, right? Jesus. <laughs> oh, wh- who's victim? <laughs> what, what is this movie doing about? <laughs> yeah, I'm making phone calls. All right. And then uh, as we're progressing. Oh, go ahead. I'll just say making phone calls. Um, as we progress through this movie here, like I think, like okay, they clearly wanted us to know about this scene because they sh- they shot it and put it in the movie. But um, this is uh, when there's enough things about this movie that are weird. But this to me is a is a huge oversight. Okay, so it's it's a beautiful little scene where these children they're all they're not these children are not related. They're orphans. Um. And so I, I, and they still car parts. And so they're taking their money from their, their, their profits from these stolen parts. Um, and they're putting it all together and they're, they're, they're looking at ads for a house. So they have picked out this house that they're going to buy and it's $68,000. And so this kid is going to, um, is going to, you know, read the ad to all these kids so they can be dreaming of this house because they don't have a home. Right? So they Five need a home. Bedroom, two and a half bathroom, garage, dining, porch, gas kitchen, washer, jar, it's still 68000 oh, Right, yeah. Keep that car running good and we'll have it. Hey guys, let's wash up for dinner. All right. So there's another scene coming up here where um, the, 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 the oldest boy calls the real estate agent because they have enough money now for a down payment. And they tell him that somebody else bought the house. 
right? And um, I guess you know, I'll just give away the 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 what bugs me is at the end of the movie. Um, they go to a house like, and, and, uh, you know, Aaron gray and, and, um, and the beard have now, um, united, you know, legally. And, um, and these kids are their kids and they show this house and you don't know if that's the house from the ad. You don't like, they don't tell you that, that it's not, it's not anything that's in the movie, but you just, you just have to assume, I guess. Right. Yeah. But the, the sad thing is that you have to assume Maybe the biggest pivotal pivotal point of the whole movie is they when they call and say that house is already sold. You just saw that that he was eavesdropping on this conversation about this house. He knows. You have to assume that the house at the end is the house that they wanted, and that Kenny Rogers loves these kids so much, and he knew that at this point in the movie that he bought the house. But they don't give him that, like. It feels like in all these Kenny Rogers movies that we have to make Kenny Rogers or his character to be out the, the greatest thing that has ever existed. What a missed opportunity here. Or his. Or his <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. So here's where the kids get. Oh God. The kids get taken, <laughs> uh, taken in. Um, and, uh, and he's gonna, he's gonna get them back, you know, um, and so uh, this is the, the, such a great scene. And again, he uses that charm of his to to woo this uh, this you know what uh, you know employee of uh, the sheriff's department. I don't really know what their her role is. Um, but I he's and he's wearing um, he's wearing a, a, a Boy Scout uniform. Right around. That should be a red flag. Sure. And I'm you, a Boy Scout leader looking for boys. <laughs> Well, it's so well. It's, so you, no, he's he's using a Boy Scout uniform as a policeman's uniform, as a sheriff's uh, uh, department uniform, and um, and if you're like, no way, man, that doesn't look like a Boy Scout no, uniform to me. To um, this movie has to stupidly point this out. If you couldn't see it here, well, yes, sure. They hold on to that <laughs> really long time, like you know, um, and so. It begs the question, where did he get this Boy Scout uniform? Yeah, we really needed the establishing scene of him beating up a scout leader yeah, behind it, the bushes and then coming out of the bushes. <laughs> and then, is, yeah, was a dead Boy Scout found along the racing circuit? You know, um, <laughs> but, like it'd be, it'd be great if like that scene where Doc is reading, uh, Anthony Michael Hall's character is reading the newspaper trying to figure out where their next race is. If also in there it said like, Missing Boy Scout. You see a headline? It's yeah. on the side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, Missing Boy Scout. Yeah, only evidence at the scene was gray <laughs> facial hair. Gray beard hair. <laughs> gray beard clippings. With with with, with uh, whiskers. With traces of uh, of chili from two days ago. <laughs> no, it's like always they, they always say nice things about the victims and it's just like people described him as the largest boy scout we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. I'll bet you do. Uh, here, these release forms need to be signed in triplicate uh -huh. then give them to the deputy. Uh-huh. I, I don't get the uh huh thing, but he's trying to do here. Um, he's he's obviously trying to act dumb because that sheriff's dumb. But uh, this next thing that he says is so weird. Again, I I get the I think he's trying to act like that sheriff that he met for eight seconds earlier in the movie. Um, but this next thing, I don't know. This is kind of predator. Uh, I know. You're a mighty pretty little filly. Got a good mind to kiss you smack dab on the mouth. Take you in my arms and watch you clean across the state of Texas. Let me see me. The director was like, Kenny, that's not your line. <laughs> he's like, it's a beard. <laughs> that wasn't Mom. even the line. Well, and he's like, wait a second. What is she going to do about it? Is she going to call the police? <laughs> can't call yourself. When you try to call yourself, it just gives you a busy signal. It's just at the All right. <laughs> I wanted to keep this um this going here the this scene um 
I just wanted to show this other thing. Again, it's weird to me. Um, okay, these kids aren't, uh, they're not in prison jumpsuits. Those are actually their, uh, their racing jumpsuits. But uh, here comes the real sheriff, right? And he misses them by a second. His vehicle is going to pull up right behind their RV, which is unbelievable to me that he wouldn't be suspect of, of an RV at the place he's going to pick up these kids because the guy who keeps taking these kids drives an RV. I mean, I, I just, I'm not a detective, and I figured that out. <laughs> and that may, uh -huh. be, that may be the same RV from Breaking Bad. Uh-huh. And also, why is the sheriff in a taxi? I don't know, but that taxi driver get free ad right there. <laughs> oh yeah, let's call that number. Uh, that's a good. That's a good point. That's not a five 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 number. We should call it. Um. So um, the uh, what's I guess what's interesting about this is that to me is that he's not in a, a, a you know why is he in a cab? So I I when I thought about when I saw this and I thought about it, I was like, you know what? He couldn't have driven his squad car up there because you can't fit. There, I mean, there's six children. I don't know if you guys know notice that. If you guys, if you, I, I don't know if you guys ever, if you, if you ever pause the movie to count, but of the children of the movie, there's six <laughs> of them. Okay, so six kids. Like they're a pack. Yeah. The this this yeah this half a dozen pack of kids, uh, probably wouldn't fit into half a reg. Uh, uh, they probably wouldn't fit into a regular size squad car. I mean, if it lets you cut them up. Right. Um, but I, I, so was he going to, but was he going to fly them back? Like these kids who've outsmarted him twice in this movie at this point, he's going to fly. He's going to, he's going to hope that everything's going to be super cool all the way through the plane ride. I I don't know. Is that plane going to still have all of its parts by the time it lands? <laughs> All right, next victim. Every time we go into like one of these bar scenes and you say next victim, I just think like, um, well, I can't think of his name now. Or that serial killer who would take Ted, women. Ted Bundy. Anyways. Ted, Ted Bundy. Bundy. Thank you. I was all I could think of was Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers. I don't think we're the first people to compare Ted Bundy to, to Kenny Rogers. Um, <laughs> to Kenny Rogers. <laughs> um, so okay. So here's the thing. Now that we have this perfectly, uh, st you know, uh, still shot here on the screen. Um, okay. So all these women are just fawning over him. I just don't get it. And so back to the waitress with the belt. Um, the waitress is the weirdest one to me because she's the only one that doesn't have a history. Like clearly he walks into these places and he's been on this scene for a while. Right. And they're, they're, these women are so happy that he's back in town. He like, he clearly was, um, I, you know, I, I guess making his rounds. I guess, you know, he was the, he was the, the player. Right. Um, and then he, that's maybe that's part of this story that he's finally going to settle down, but it just seems so unreal. Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, he was like the original, like, ludicrous, you know, that song, you know, you got, you know, in different area codes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, he, yeah, yeah, he's got, he's filling he's, the blank. <laughs> yeah, he's got one for every area code. <laughs> one second. Give me one. Yeah. yeah. My, my 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 beard has work to do. I'll be right with you. <laughs> He's uh, yeah, he, and just smiles and just like hold on. Just and, hold on. And that feels like such a um Burt Reynolds move, like to be kissing and then looking away and giving him you know, um I mean I could say I'd put I'd put those two guys in the same class, you know. That very similar, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then here's the the, the dumb. Oh. Here, yeah, here's the dumbest joke I came up with uh, with this whole for this whole movie is that so the kids are um are making them do a bunch of uh exercise because 
You, you need that for stock car racing, right? <laughs> we got to whip him into shape. And by the way, they're eating chicken. And um, I don't know if it was, I, I never did verify whether, uh, did, did Kenny Rogers have his own chicken restaurant or was that just a thing from Seinfeld? Oh, we we had a chance to look it up and we we blew it. Ah, <laughs> oh, um, man. <clears throat> well, he's clearly endorsing KFC here. Um. Oh, they slap his hand away. Are you looking it up, Corey? Are you reading our fact checker? I yeah, I'm sorry. That's why I'm looking down <laughs> right now. I looking it up. It um. I mean, this says it was founded 33 years ago. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna dig too much into it. I yeah, I th- I'm gonna have to say yes, it is. Is there a real company? Is there, is there still a menu? Kenny on Rogers Roasters. Is there still a menu? Yeah, deliciously healthy. It says. <laughs> that's the the <laughs> episode where Kramer's apartment's all red, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can't very short aside. I, yeah, yeah. I saw a meme the other day that was, uh, what, what's going on in there, Kramer? And he was like, uh, Woodstock 99, Jerry. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good one. Um, uh, <laughs> is there still a menu on there, Corey? I, it was just a Wikipedia. Uh, uh, we'll dig into it more later. Well, I'm just going to assume that you can get a six pack of nuggets. Ooh, I like it. With honey mustard. Oh, it hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> I also think it would be a, a fun little like side like B plot is uh who wins one man who wants chicken or six children. <laughs> it's been a much more entertaining montage. <laughs> okay, you can make me cough your more. <clears throat> okay, right, here we go. Uh, so he does. Okay, so he's doing the workouts. Oh, that's that kid's just adorable. All right, here here comes the here comes the the finale for my 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 dumb joke. So he gets to the top of the bleachers and he rips his, sh- his shirt off and he goes, this is the real six pack. <laughs> it shows his abs. Anyway. That would have been, that would have been the best. And then they just play a uh, level turning around and then just go to credits. Oh, let's go eat. <laughs> let's go eat. I would have won this movie an Oscar for sure. Yeah. Along with the Grammy that he won for the song. Yeah, I mean, how many individual awards can you win for, you know, because he could have gotten he could have gotten best actor, uh, best screenplay. Um, uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, best co-writer for a song. Uh, best, uh, best Boy Scout impersonator. Mike. What did best you say? Boy Scout impersonator. <laughs> best sung by. You bet, yeah, best sung by. Sung by. Sung. <laughs> Sorry, sung by. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. So, uh, so here's the, here's the wedding scene. This is the very end of the movie. So, okay. If, if those who are interested in the movie, he decided not to win the race and go after the kids. Cause that's really more important. Um, so he has the kids, he has the wife, uh, you know, and, I uh, and, and they, uh, they, they get married and they go to this house. Can run, can hide, never let it oh, nice little the the song. End. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think of this song? Have you ever heard it before? Okay, so they're getting out of the RV. Um, there's this school bus for no reason at all. There's no reason that this school bus is here. The kids are not on that school bus. They get out of the RV, <laughs> which, by the way, looks like a different RV than the other one. But they upgraded. Um, oh, and then we went back to color of the county. Sorry about that. Um, okay, this is the real six pack. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it would have just felt so funny if he did that. Just, just, <laughs> just regular Kenny Rogers belly. Just <laughs> oh, I was thinking like a groundskeeper Willie 
type of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just super ripped. And um and he's like, I got it from Boy Scout and and um so Oh no. Uh but anyway, back to the the this last scene. So this is right where the credits are gonna roll. So the kids get out of this RV. There's this weird, you know, not weird bus, but this bus is here for no reason other than I think my brain thinks that when that kid read the 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 ad for the house, they said it was right near a school, that this is our evidence that this is that house because it's near a school because the bus is dropping off kids and that that the greatest guy, the greatest lover known to women, Mr. Rogers and his and his beard um, would only get married on a weekday during school hours. <laughs> the peak romance. <laughs> like, hey, you want to get married on a Tuesday at two thirty p.m.? <laughs> um, anyway, I and this is you know this is the real estate sign. You know, I don't know. I I I feel like what a, that they just left that on the table. They left they left that one scene that would have put this all together and they just, they just, I don't know. It makes me want to start a brawl with the Gatlin brothers. That's, it just makes me angry. You, you should write the, the Kenny Rogers, you know, establishment, a letter and ask them why the they foundation? didn't do that. Yeah. The like, estate? yeah, the, estate. yeah the, the Kenny Rogers foundation and a six pack <laughs> of nuggets. The, Oh, and I'm buy a six pack for please. orphans. I'm gonna write them a six pack of letters, <laughs> right? And I'm, I'm all of them are like, I need to speak to your supervisor, uh, you know, and then uh, and see if they respond. Where's uh, Kenny? Yeah, I, I do think Kenny Rogers died, right? Oh yeah, he's toast. I yeah. think so. Yeah, I would imagine he's roasted. Is there- <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh my God. <laughs> you okay, so no. <laughs> <laughs> so we got um. So okay, so what's our what's our final thoughts about this movie, and then let's go into our rating, our, our rankings here. Yeah, final thoughts on this movie. I mean, I got to go with what you said earlier. It uh, it is a very you know Sunday afternoon type movie that's on where you're folding laundry and doing other things, and you catch a few scenes every once in a while. <laughs> Um, overall, I, I did like coward more and then that's kind of weird, I think, but I did. I thought that, I thought that was a better role. I thought he did a better job in that movie, but overall, you thought, you I thought mean, Kenny I did a better job. <laughs> yeah. Pile on to Corey. <laughs> yeah. I'm all about the coward coward, you know, not Tommy screwed, screw the coward, but like, dude, Kenny, the priest. The, the, the preacher. preacher. You know, he went on to be a race car driver and adopting six children. You know, that'd be great Anyways, if they were the that's same. That's my final thought they, on that. They would be great if they were the same character because uh, cause he that was kind great. of a ladies guy as well, right? In the, Pastor Joe, right? Was it was kind of a preacher Joe. Oh, yeah. You know, I, but I think, he, you know, I think they subtly were trying to imply that he paid for it. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Like, like he I think- had to. He had to back then. That's why when he went to these other towns during six pack, all those ladies were like, "Sweet, I'm gonna yeah. get paid." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'd rather. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get. Uh, I'm gonna get extra tips. <laughs> I don't. Anyway, um, moving on. Anyway, look, <laughs> that's my final thought on that, uh, Cam. Uh, every scene certainly happened, <laughs> and it, you know what? And I gotta say. Uh, for a reason, uh, I think there could have been more scenes, but like as, as Trent said, but at least every scene happened for a reason in this movie. That can't really be said of the the previous film. Yeah, Colorado County is kind of a mess. It's <laughs> just a mess. <laughs> um. All right, let's give it. Let's give our our, our ratings. Let's do. Uh, let's do six pack first. Um, I got. I gotta go six. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I gotta go six. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Six for six. Six for pack. six. Six pack. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I, I'll give mine. I. I. I'm gonna give it a six as well. I. I like that number. If I could. If I could not do round numbers, it'd be like a five point eight. I'd say. Wow. Um. 
You guys. I know it's up there, but I mean, like, for a feel-good Sunday afternoon movie, that's a, that's a 5.8. Um, I'm going to give it a 4. Did we get the ranking for Coward? You give it a 4? I give it a 4. I, I'm going to give uh, a six-pack a 4. Um, it's a... Uh, it's it's a fun movie to make fun of, uh, but it's a uh, it's a uh, it's dumb. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's, we shouldn't do these rankings after ragging on the movies. It's more fun than <laughs> uh, watching them sometimes. No, I mean, like, uh, you know, I have some nostalgia for it because I remember when it. I mean, I guess I don't. I don't think I remember when it came out. I was pretty young for that, but I uh, I remember watching this movie as a child, and I uh, and I was like, eh, you know, it was. You know, it, it definitely like when you said like do while you're doing laundry. I think that's exactly how I've always felt. Like this is like it's a, <laughs> it's okay that it's on. It's not gonna ruin my day that it's on. But I ain't I'm I'm not glued to it. I'm not gonna be like man, what's gonna happen next? <gasps> Gasp! You know, um, yeah, it doesn't have me on the on the edge of my chair. But uh, let's let's do uh, let's do our ratings for um, Coward of the County because I I have a feeling that one of us liked Coward of the County more than well, the. Hold on, we got we gotta look at the the objective score from oh. IMDb, and shocker, it was a six. But I think that's just people trying to be clever to get it to be a six pack. Yeah, yeah, it's just like constantly someone watching to make sure. Yeah, like uh, irony, <laughs> irony beats out honesty every time. Every time. Oh, I'm looking. All to right, see what I rated them. Oh, you got oh, yeah. That's what okay. I gotta do. I gotta write it down. Time, time of. I'm getting, I'm getting like, uh, recency bias here. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I actually go into the, the IMDb and I actually put a star and I rank them. I got like over like a thousand movies ranked. Oh my gosh. Over the years. See, I, I can't do that. I'd yeah, to, I've been doing. I'd have to create another email address. I'm banned from IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> for putting in like trivias or goofs it's, from, or it's from trivias yes i uh, i basically <laughs> what i was doing for a good like year and a half i was going on every like star wars documentary you know and uh, which there's there's thousands of, of of star wars documentaries and i would write in the um in the in the trivia i uh, this is a reference to the motion picture star wars <laughs> <laughs> and I got away with it for a long time, and I uh, and then I really hope this is true because this is one of the most Trent jokes I've ever heard. No, no, I did it, I did it. And there was there there was a there was a Netflix um documentary uh, called The Jedi Academy came out like six years ago, seven years ago, and um that's the last one, and that's the one that I got flagged on, and they took them all down. <laughs> But was, it's just the same joke. Every yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> ba based, oh my ba God. based on the, the the yeah the motion pictures, nineteen seventy seven. They just thought you were a robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's great. Um, okay, coward, coward. I am. Um, when I gave six pack a five point eight, uh, I'm just I'm just gonna match it. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make them even. I'm gonna make them even by a little bit. Five point nine. Five point nine. Round that up to six. Coward, dude. <laughs> what a, what a, yourself what a great... deeper. You know what? Eleven out of ten. Coward <laughs> of the county. Oscar award winning. Put it on the, the big screen. No, uh five it'll give the same as six pack. Five point eight. Cam, that's it. I gotta it. go. It got real quiet. Uh, I gotta go. Go to to my lord. Um, real stinker. Yeah, I'm I think the recency bias kind of does. I, I was uh, when I, when I first saw it, uh, as I said earlier, not a great headspace, but but boy, <laughs> the clips just confirmed it. Yeah, I I would give. Well, my my. Go ahead. I was gonna say my problem with with ranking these scores. I mean. The, you know, IMDB, they call me like, you know, high score Wavanak. Like, I just give everything high scores. So, you have, you have a rep, yeah, you have a reputation. You, you can't, you, you can't disappoint your fans. Um, so, nope. I, I give, uh, so I'll give, I'll, give, I'll give Coward of the County a two. Um, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's, it's the worst thought out 
movie I've ever seen. Um, it, it it really it's it'd be a one, but the 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 fact that we got to make a Elvin the Chipmunks reference it gives it a one an extra point. Um, but I but still like like I I you know we and we still have w- one more um, I. We, I think there's only one more uh, Kenny Rogers movie we could do, right? But it's a three, it's a, it's a, a three picture deal. It's a trilogy, right? A three pack. Yep. Of uh, uh, for the Gambler. I think he was in a, a Christmas movie too at one point, but um, we should do the Gambler too. Yeah. Um, I uh, because you know, this guy, this guy's such a um, an American storyteller that he, you know, when he couldn't do it all in one up ep- in one movie like these two. Then that must mean this the story arc must be epic, right? Um. Anyway, well, uh, oh, so okay. What what does uh what does IMDb say for um for Color of the County? Oh, uh, this one's criminally high. Um. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, if it starts with a McDonald's s- Wi-Fi. If it starts with six, I'm gonna be upset. If it starts with a six. Oh well, it did uh, I mean, win a Academy of C- a Country Music Award for the song. Um, oh, for the yeah, song. But no, we're 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 working with solid four point nine. Okay. What would you rank the song out of ten? I, I I don't think I'm the best to judge that one. The the I don't know. I, ten out of ten. Ten. I'd rank that song, girl. <laughs> Um, we may we may have talked about this already. Oh oh wait oh you meant you meant the song from you were talking about the song camp you were referencing. Oh. I thought you were talking about that. I thought we were talking about Coward of the County song. My bad. Yeah. Wires yeah. crossed. Yeah. Wait, which one are we talking about? <laughs> well, he said that it, the the song won the the award, right? But that would be the co- Coward of the County. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Love will turn us around. I don't. I maybe it won an award. But um, do you think he played both those songs during his shows? Oh, of course. And like, do yeah, you I mean, think the crowd was like chanting like, "coward, coward"? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swore I'd never play it again. <laughs> <laughs> we got any cowards out in the audience tonight? <laughs> uh, okay, so um, so speaking of the gambler. Oh, sorry. Speaking of the gambler, there are many movies named the gambler. Like there's, uh, yeah, the there's, 1974, 1980, 97, 2014. There's a lot of them. Do you think somebody remade it? Like there's a reboot. Like they had to reboot the series for the n- newer generation. Possibly. Mark Wahlberg was in the the most recent one. Man, Mark Wahlberg would make an amazing Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers with a Bostonian. If they accent. did like a die. If- <laughs> <laughs> Can he grow a beard? It would be it would be a CGI beard for sure. I want to see Mark Wahlberg as Kenny Rogers in Six Pack. Yeah, <laughs> you, you you stole my car pots. I don't do an accent. <laughs> it's just like the, the the one accent Midwesterners literally cannot do. I, it's it's hilarious to me. Yeah, I I just know like they always say like my cockies instead of car keys. <laughs> my cockies. My, my car. I can't do it. Yeah, yet. I can't do it. I can't. He he would be perfect for that that scene running up the stairs and being like, here's the real sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the good vibrations plays. <laughs> Mark <laughs> Mark Wahlberg in the credits, Mark Wahlberg as Kenny Rogers stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Rogers as Mark. Yeah, Rogers. yeah, yeah. So, you know what yeah. they should do? What they should well, anything do, else? What they should do oh, yeah. is that they should do the same thing they did with Tupac and um and Ronnie James Dio, and then make um a hologram of Kenny Rogers, and then let him star in as many movies as technologically possible. Um, all right. Well, so speaking of technology, so since we had to redo half of this episode, um. I the the benefit to our viewers is they get more time because we have no concept of how long this took. Um so I uh, so <laughs> so I uh, if you if you've been here from the start you are uh probably late for work. Um you know or what <laughs> somebody or dinner or yeah, lunch so, or anything. somebody's probably wondering if you're okay. Um so 
I send out a, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm Mark safe alert. And then from Kenny Rogers and, uh, and that's it. That's uh that's all we, uh, that's all I have. Anybody else have anything to, to chime in on? That's the way anything the story goes, can? brother. Well, once again, thank you everyone for hanging out with us. Get to work. Let everybody know you're safe. And uh, once again, thank you for joining us on. Do you remember this movie? Or this TV show. Do you remember?